Oh, right. Hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel. Man, I slept in a bit late today, so we're running a little bit behind schedule, but that's just one of the benefits of working for yourself. Look, the big news of yesterday and at the moment, as I'm sure you're well aware, is we completed a textbook Bart Simpson pattern as of yesterday. And I just wanted to give my two sats on this issue. I'm sure this is not news to you, so I'm not going to spend too much time, but the meat and potatoes of this is that we had a huge amount, right? Over half a billion dollars liquidated. People got absolutely wrecked. I've seen screenshots of people wiping out their whole accounts and, and blah, blah, blah. And ultimately that's what I think this was. Now we saw on January the 1st, this place, this company Matrix Port, who apparently the developers were behind Bcash or their proponents of bigger blocks or something like that. Anyway, most people have not heard of this, but this is what had been attributed to the dump. But I just wanted to come here and, and give you my opinion and say, look, every dip has its narrative, right? There always has to be a reason that investors can attribute. And the majority of, you know, if you've been here for a while, you just, you've seen this a bunch of times, right? You've seen a bunch of liquidations, a bunch of Bart Simpsons, inverse Barts, okay? You know, we, we've seen it all before. And they come out and they say, look, we are definitely going to see a spot Bitcoin ETF approval on the 1st of January, only to come out on the 3rd and say, oh, by the way, 0% chance that we see the ETF approval. And this is what the market attributes to the liquidation cascade, right? Anyone that reached out to try to confirm whether this news was true or false seemingly was blocked. And it certainly feels to me at least like it's a little bit like this, right? It's not working. Bring in Jim Cramer, okay? And of course, Jim Cramer comes out and says you can't kill Bitcoin, only for Bitcoin to nosedive from 45 to 42 or even less. I think it went as low as 30 something on some exchanges, depending on how thick or thin the order books were. But the facts are the facts, okay? This Bitcoin dump was a trap to shake you out of your position. And I actually think this is bullish. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. And I know what you might be thinking. How can this possibly be bullish? But... Think about it as simply as possible, right? If we're going to have a shake out to the downside, that means we've cleared all of that out and now we can move to the upside without any pain or resistance. If it was the other way around, then I think we should be concerned. If we had this big shake out to the upside and then we started to pave the way for massive downside, then I think we could be quite concerned. But what we did was we ran everything to the top, then wrecked everyone to the downside. And that tells me to expect this to continue. Now I'm going to show you some nicer stuff in the charts in just a minute. But remember, we can say this with pretty high confidence, this was a shakeout, this was just a trap, okay, this was a liquidation cascade, because the SEC was holding meetings with the NASDAQ CBOE and the NYSE to finalise comments submitted by the spot Bitcoin ETF issuers, okay, so this thing is still seemingly moving forward, and you have to love and admire the timing here, okay, Bitcoin dumps 9% on the same day that BlackRock had planned to spend $10 million to seed their spot Bitcoin ETF, says it right there, okay, January 3rd, so, is that a coincidence? I personally don't think so. Meanwhile, under the hood, Fidelity just filed a registration for securities of its spot Bitcoin ETF. So Fidelity is still moving forward as well with this ETF. It doesn't, at least from my perspective, look like that news was real. It also, in my opinion, isn't likely that that fake news from Matrixport was even to blame here. I think, like I said, every dip has its narrative. They need to give retail something to blame it on because saying that they just manipulated the price down to clean out the order books, hand that Bitcoin over to before they approve the ETF next week and moon the thing, okay? That doesn't sit right with people, but this is the reality. All markets are manipulated and it's not that big of a deal unless, of course, you were one of the poor people that was taken out. But if you were, that's because you're not managing your own risk, okay? That's because you're degenerately sizing your positions so that a stop loss is gonna take out chunks of your account or worse, blow the whole thing up, okay? The facts are the facts. This was a liquidation, okay, no bigger really than the one back here into the current 60-day cycle low, not even close to the size of this one, as you can see right here. So with one of the biggest liquidations that we've seen in some time, we still couldn't breach 40k and we still couldn't sweep the cycle low, could we? Facts are facts, remember. Not only that, the super trend buy signal indicator remained intact the entire time. Zooming in and having a quick look at the Bitcoin chart, you can see, look, this low didn't even take out the cycle low. What does that mean? It means we haven't even got a failed cycle. So a lot of people have been saying to me, I'm way too bullish and I'm not open to bearish arguments. Listen, 
I am completely open to bearish arguments if we lose this low. I don't know how many times I need to say this. This is my invalidation. Take out that low. We have a failed cycle and I will grab this arrow here and drag it significantly below this one, okay? Telling me that my bias becomes that we spend the remainder of this 60-day cycle at least, if not more, in a downtrend. But right now, we're having these huge liquidation cascades, these huge flush outs, and we're still printing higher lows. Okay, so how can I be bearish? It's malpractice to be bearish until we fail the cycle. I don't think that's going to happen as of yet. Again, if it does, I have a clear invalidation. Okay, I'll be taken out of the trades and we will go from there. As it stands right now, we still have a valid cycle, which tells us that on a balance of probabilities, we should be expecting higher prices. As I was showing you earlier as well, there's, it's not the only, it's not just cycle theory, right? There's also these other indicators. Take a look at this because We've also got another buy indicator here and it's confirmed with a volume breakout down the bottom. Okay, again, not something you see when invalidation occurs. When bullish invalidation occurs, charts don't look like this. But also, as you can see, not really doing anything out of the ordinary. Quick liquidation cascade, grind back up and go. Same here. And now it just tells us that this could well be coming, okay? Tells us to keep an open mind about better than expected things for Bitcoin walking forward. Not to mention the Bollinger Band buy signal along with volume confirmation is also still printed. We should end this month green. Okay, you can see that here. Buy signal right in the upper Bollinger Bands after a compression. Again, it tells us to be open to see an expansion and we have a volume breakout. Not something you see after bullish invalidation has occurred. If you're bearish right now, it's probably because you're acting on emotions or paying attention to false narratives rather than looking at the chart. And my advice would be simply stop looking at the news, okay? <laughs> Just pay attention to the charts. What do the charts tell you? Because they tell me to be, keep an open mind about seeing higher Bitcoin prices walking forward again, sweep that low and I become bearish. I'm also not completely permeable pertaining to the stock market, okay? Again, I'm a data guy. Data is data, facts are facts. The US debt just surpassed 34 trillion, okay? This is gonna keep going up, and at some point, this is gonna end badly. Not to mention, stocks were officially lower during the Santa Claus rally period. And that doesn't happen often, and when it does, it's usually a potential warning sign. I was talking about this leading up to this point. I said I would come back and revisit it, and now we have. Okay, we're only higher in January 40% of the time when we don't get a big green Santa Claus rally period. Q1 on average is flat and the full year is up a median of just 3%. So do I still think we've got time to have a blow off top moment as we are remaining paused and looking out towards those cuts? Yes, I still think that is potentially on the table because no bearish, or excuse me, bullish invalidation has occurred. But all of this kind of feeds into my narrative the whole time that I continuously talk about, which is that this year is going to be a lot harder to navigate than last year. Last year, everyone thinks they're a genius because we just went up in a straight line, okay? Higher highs and higher lows the entire time. This year, if this yellow squiggle of mine is to come into fruition, right, is going to be a lot harder to navigate. We could well be looking at extreme greed and FOMO followed by extreme panic and complacency. And as I said, you know, record debt, that is a house of cards waiting to collapse. We also have the Santa Claus rally period failing, telling us to keep an open mind about actually seeing a negative year and a tough January. And we could argue perhaps that this is because after a nine week win streak, we are probably due for a break. But the past five times Santa didn't come, we also saw a red January. So going back to this chart, just because this is my expectation does not mean we couldn't do something like this, right? Boom. That is certainly on the cards. That would be harder to deal with as ever. We have to take it one day at a time and be open to everything. But it's no good telling me I'm a permeable, okay? <laughs> I am slowly but surely becoming one of the biggest bears on the entire platform, okay? I am calling for a massive deflationary bust. A lot of people can't even comprehend this. I've been getting a lot of messages for people saying, do you mean asset deflation or like proper negative CPI deflation? Yes, negative CPI deflation. Not many people are calling for that. Believe me, not many people think that's even on the cards. Everyone thinks they're just going to keep running this thing turbo, going to keep printing money and propping everything up. And as I made a case for in yesterday's video, that is not something I personally see coming. So I'm open to everything, okay? I'm not dogmatic. I am not married to any bias. But until invalidations occur, I can't possibly flip bearish, I'm afraid. So a mixed bag of signals because Bitcoin, even after that cascade, couldn't even fill that CME gap at 39 and change. Even after that half a billion plus of liquidity handed over to BlackRock 
for seeding their ETF, we still couldn't sweep the 60 day cycle low. So Bitcoin in my mind remains bullish. However, the stock market has flashed warning signals and is telling us to keep an open mind about possibly seeing more difficult times for the remaining few weeks of January at least. We do have CPI however, coming out next week. So if we can get CPI come down significantly, expect risk to come on strongly. We also have the DXY thinking about thinking about breaking out, but it's also thinking about thinking about rejecting and moving down towards that three year cycle low, something we need to keep an eye on, of course. We've already kind of covered Bitcoin, haven't we, right? You know where my invalidation is, you can see my stop loss, all the while we're not stopped out, then I remain bullish bias. Someone was asking if my XRP trade was stopped out. Nope, here it is. Okay, we got in early enough to not have to worry about this. So we'll see. We'll see what happens from here. Let's drag this across. And yeah, we'll keep pushing that. Gold looking like it's on its way to find that cycle low. Not much more to say about that. Oil again, thinking about thinking about breaking out, isn't it? So we'll see. We'll see. For now, stop is choked up. And either way, we're guaranteed to walk away with plenty of points of profit here. Stock market is similarly to Bitcoin, right? Here's the S&P. Hasn't quite printed a failed cycle yet. So it still tells us that whilst this is a big move, right, whilst this move doesn't have much in the way of pullbacks or correction or consolidation, it does tell us that objectively speaking, we haven't got a failed cycle yet. So we could fail today for sure, right? This could be coming, in which case we'll be probably be expecting something more like that into the cycle low, and then we can come out of here perhaps. Or assuming we hold this cycle, then it, all that tells us is to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes, despite the data from the Santa Claus rally telling us that this cycle probably should fail. So I'm open to anything. We'll see what happens. The Nasdaq has already swept its low. So perhaps the, Nas the Nasdaq is going to lead here. That's to be determined. The Dow Jones, I still have this trade open, but if we don't start to hold this area, I think what I'm going to do actually is move my stop in today's session up from down here to below this low here, something like this, right? I think that's what I'm gonna do at the open today. I'll change this to a dash line as we always do. So if we come and close a daily candle or even move down below this low here from the 20th of December, I'll be taking out of this trade and lock in the profit. If we continue to kind of chop around and grind up, then I'll keep pushing this trade because this angle is pretty steep, but we'll see how it goes. Either way, if I'm taking out here, there'll be a re-entry later. The VIX, kind of looking like it wants to spike a little bit higher before it rolls over, but I do expect it to roll over. And the Russell 2K is firing early warning signs, isn't it? Back below this range. So this is actually a fake breakout. It could, of course, produce a type three breakout where we get this hard retest and resumption off. We will see one day at a time. For now, I'm not really sweating this too much. I think any pullbacks just give us opportunity to add to positions. And the crypto related equities really quickly, right? I get a lot of people saying nasty closes. Oh my gosh, look at what we're going to do. What are we going to do? Look, the thing is still holding. There's Coinbase still holding above support. Okay. So not the end of the world yet. MicroStrategy, I get a lot of people messaging me. Well, aren't they going to sell shares? Yeah, but if he doesn't sell them, they expire. Okay. I, what would you do? I would sell them. <laughs> and then he says he's going to buy more Bitcoin. That makes sense. MicroStrategy is trading at around 20 to 30% premium. So you can sell something that's trading at a premium and buy something that's trading at a discount, i.e. Bitcoin. You know, it's like people are messaging me saying, oh, what about that? Well, what about it, right? If I was Michael Saylor, I'd do the exact same thing. So I'm definitely not going to penalize him. And also, whilst narratives and people on Twitter might care, the chart doesn't care, does it? Look at the chart, okay? Look at that. It doesn't care. Still trending up, okay? Happy days. Long and strong continue to push. Dips are for buying and adding and moving stops up, in my opinion. Riot as well. Look kind of a nasty shakeout, but what are we really doing? Not a great deal, in my opinion. We're probably also building a, another angle of attack here, something like that. So if we can chop around in here and get a breakout, then perhaps the stop can come up and go underneath there. And we'll look to add a position. Marathon as well, right? Marathon, same deal, right? It's holding support, isn't it? <laughs> holding support quite well, frankly. Something like this wouldn't be the end of the world, would it? And then draw a trend line, buy the breakout, add a position, move the stops up. Let's see, right? Maybe that's the top. Maybe this is what comes next, much lower down. And we'll do the same thing from lower down. But like I've been saying over and over again, I think it's time to be adding positions and moving stops up. I don't think now is the time to be getting worried and stressing because if we really are gonna get bullish after the ETF and around the ETF, we could be looking at much, much higher numbers. So gonna to continue to push the trades and we'll see what the market will give us. I hope you found value here today. I hope this isn't too late for you. And in the meantime, take care from me. All the best. Cheers, bye.